So Sarah, I'm going to read Sarah's bio. Is that okay? Are you ready? Sarah Cordeman graduated from Trinity. Did you know that? Yes. Good. In 2004, she and her husband Kit are also is also an alumnus of 2007 and live in San Diego, where we all want to be today. Despite their geographical di dis distance from San Antonio, Sarah and Kit have remained engaged with the Trinity community through the local alumni chapter, which of course we started in 2009. Four yeah. Okay. And it's been going pretty well. And you started this with two other alumni that are already there, and you reactivated the chapter. So we, I guess we had it many years ago. You reactivated it in 2009. Yes. Okay. And you've served as chapter president for the past three years, so one of the board and volunteer management criteria is you, you've got to have somebody else that's coming on to take over and things like that. That's what Sarah's going to tell us about. If anyone wants to move to San Diego. Oh, oh, oh well, there you go. <laughs> so bring it together. Bringing alumni together with meaningful events has, has reconnected former friends, developed new relationships, which happens to all of us, created a sense of home away from home for many Texas transplants in San Diego. They don't want to come back, though, once they get there, is that? Probably not. With great clarity and calculation, Sarah is pursuing a path of development and fundraising in higher education. Having worked at the University of California, San Diego, for more than six years, the need for private money to support the, the important research of faculty and students is quite evident in light of the state and federal budget cuts, which we have a little going on here, bridging the financial gap for students and faculty whose research matters to the public interest now and for the long term is what motivates this Trinity alum. So tonight, however, what's, what, uh, Sarah, you'll help us understand is, uh, I don't even know how long ago, you went to a seminar months ago? This uh, about two months ago. Two months ago, okay. Uh, about how to manage volunteers and manage boards. And, and so, since we are, we all need hints and tips about how to do that. So, I will hand the evening over to you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you for having me here. I'm really pleased to be here and to share with you the things that I've learned that are starting to re-motivate me about how I want to more strategically approach um, uh, my alumni chapter in San Diego. Um, I guess a little bit of background about okay, a little bit of background about how I got here today. Um, again, you've just heard that I've been the board president in San Diego for four years, and I also work at UC San Diego, and um, I, I've been having some like thoughts in the past six months or so about how to more strategically organize the chapter. I needed more structure to feel more effective in the way that I was leading our chapter. San Diego, the nature of the city is it's very transient and there are people constantly coming and going. So I see a lot of new faces at our events, but I don't have as much retention as I'd personally like to see at our events. Another struggle that I've had has been maintaining um, board members. We all have lots of things going on in our lives and um, over time I've gone from a board of six people and now I have a board of three and I'm very grateful to the board members that I have now but I started thinking that I needed to be able to better cultivate these relationships um, to have people remain more invested and want to participate in the alumni group um, at a greater, with a greater level of responsibility. So I spoke up at our last um, meeting in, um, in January over the phone and said that I had been having, I was sharing with them the, these struggles. And uh, Mary Kay has just been really wonderful and Salim and supporting me and how to become more effective. And so there's a, there was a class at UCSD that I wanted to take on board and volunteer management. And so they were wonderful in supporting me in that endeavor and then asked me to come give this presentation. So that's kind of how I'm here now. Um, but I feel, I feel much better equipped now to be able to be the kind of leader that I want to be and to, to help our alumni in San Diego, um, which is a, a unique group of people. So with that, I will begin. Um, and again, thank you for having me. Um, 
So something that's been really important to me in, in going through this process has been understanding what are my own motivations for involvement? Why would people be involved um, at a volunteer level and then also at a, at a board member level? Because there's different levels of requirement than just participating um, in an event. So for myself, um, this is most certainly a professional development endeavor. Um, I, I'm practicing my leadership skills and my networking skills amongst my peers in San Diego and then also with community leaders and also people at UCSD. So there's, um, this is a lot of why I am doing what I'm doing. Um, I also wanted to stay in contact with Trinity. Being in San Diego and so far away from Texas and moving to California, this was my first moving away from home. So um, I, having a way to stay connected with my past was really important to me. It's also been a really great opportunity to connect with other alumni and um, just Texans in general. Um, I have a special fondness for Texas and I love coming across people from Texas because there's, we're a different breed of people and um, there's, there's instant affinity I feel when, when I meet other Texans. So that, that part's been great for me as well. Um, and then also I'm just the type of person that I'm always going to be involved with something. So being a lifelong volunteer, it's, it's natural for me to want to participate in something that I really care about and that's Trinity. <coughs> So I, I encourage you, um, I have handouts that I will provide shortly, if, um, if you'd like to. Okay, terrific. So, so I encourage you to think about these kinds of questions I have them here, um, for yourself to be able to understand your own motivation so you can uh, connect with your board members in that way as well. So again, this short little half sheet handout um, that Mary Kay is passing out have some good questions for you to think about just at your leisure about why you're involved um, in an alumni group. So feel free to take those home. It's also really important to take satisfaction out of, of your involvement because you're going to want to continue to stay involved um, if you are actually enjoying what you're doing. Um, I also see board service as a form of philanthropy. Um, this is a, you're volunteering your time here and your talents to an organization whose values you also share. So that's another, that's another way to think about um, your involvement with the alumni group. Um, and those, those are ways that I take satisfaction out of what, what I give back to Trinity. Recruitment is a really key part of developing the kind of board that you want to have. Um, and it, it needs to be something that's particularly strategic. So, pardon me. Um, so thinking, have, asking yourself, where does the board want to go? What kind of um, personal and professional motivations might your board members have? And where do you, um, how do you want to use those skills and talents to, um, to more effectively serve the community of Trinity alumni? Uh, it's important to go ahead and analyze the board for the strengths and weaknesses of your current members to figure out what, in what areas do you want to supplement and support your board by bringing in new members. Um, the strengths and weaknesses to think about um, as far as recruiting new members might be who has good local connections, particularly when it comes to career networking. Um, you want people who enjoy and thrive in an event planning um, scenario. That's something that's very detail oriented and is not, uh, is not a skill or a, a talent that people have just at, at large. Um, and then this is a key area that I would really like to see more of from my own um, chapter is having more uh, marketing and communication um, amongst the local chapter and Trinity does a really wonderful job of advertising our events but I think there's really wonderful opportunity to better utilize social media and Facebook and you know we've tried blogs and um, Mary Kay's great with Twitter and um, but you know these are all tools that we could be using better and so if you have someone that's got a, a nice background in marketing and our communications that would be a really good job for that person on your board. 
So just things to keep in mind. Um, you want to build a board that supports the needs of your organization. So one of the most important committees that you can have on a board is your recruitment committee. Because again, we, we, want to, um, we want to build the board that we want to have. So it's a it's good idea to involve your current board members in the process of recruiting members. It's, uh, you want to ask your, your current board members for relationships that they've built throughout different events to find people who also might have a higher level of interest, whether it be one-time volunteer opportunities or a more um, broader commitment as a board member. You want to reach out to new board members and make them feel welcome and also be a good board uh, role model through attendance and support and you know interjecting humor that will inspire new board members to stick around. Um, it's also good to have board uh, orientation for your new members or a reorientation for your members that have been around for a long time. It's, it's good to have reminders of why we're here and what, what our goals are. Providing a job description um, is really important um, and then also to uh, to more accurately um, go through the expectations that a board member might have considering attendance and what the time commitment might look like and responsibilities at and after the meetings, which we'll get into as well. So we can have effective boards and there can be also not so effective boards. How about we focus on the effective ones? <laughs> Um, it's, it's really great to have shared vision and values. You're going to have a much more harmonious board um, and decision making will be much better if, if people have shared vision and values. And I imagine that if you're involved in an alumni group, particularly at the board level, you're going to have a lot of, of the similar values. So that works out well for this kind of board. Um, a board is also going to want to have um, goals and strategies that are well-defined and a mission that is um, is concise enough for people to be able to articulate and really understand for themselves um, why they're there. Assignments need to be clear, specific, reasonable, so that people are very, um, there's no question about what their responsibilities are. It's also good to have those responsibilities match their motivations and their skill sets and talents. Um, agendas are good. We all know we've got the agenda for this weekend and we know what to expect. Um, those are always good best practices for meetings. Um, be sure to welcome diversity of opinion and tolerance of ideas and, um, and really focus on being a team rather than having one or two people specifically leading conversations. Decision making is a really big aspect of boards. Um, it's as a leader, you want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to be heard, and it's good to respect the diversity of opinions. And you know, when there is a dissenting opinion, that's something that takes a lot of courage for someone to say, "Well, you know, perhaps that's not the best way to think about it." You know, it's um, you don't want someone to feel. Um, uncomfortable with the fact that they're just thinking more analytically about a situation. So those are the kind of people that you want on your board um, to help you be effective. Um, and then another part, this is coming from a background of, I, I work in higher education, like I was saying, at UC San Diego, and I work with a lot of committees, and you're in a, this unique position as a staff member that You've got, you know, your 40 hours every week of responsibilities that you take care of, but then you're also supporting volunteer boards. So I just encourage you as um, the, the liaisons between the committees and the, the university that you be respectful of uh, staff members' time because they're, again, they're here to support us, but at the same time, we're not their boss and we need to um, be respectful of all of the different commitments that they have themselves. So board planning, we're kind of in this phase now that um, we're, we're looking forward to the next academic year. So planning is something that's on all of our minds and particularly on a weekend like this. So it's good to have a plan. And if there isn't one, you should be questioning this. Everyone should participate in, in the decision making process here um, so that, that there's buy-in and investment in the, the plan for the following year. 
and then finally, once decisions have been made, it's each of our responsibilities to make sure that the plan actually gets implemented. And this is something that, um, you know, our work as board members doesn't end after the meeting is over. There's, there are plenty of tasks to follow up on. And so that's something that I encourage everyone to really adhere to, because this is, again, what makes us effective. So, um, the, the purpose of meetings, we all kind of are familiar with these sorts of things, but we, it's good to promote teamwork um, in, in a situation outside of just the regular events that we are participating in. It kind of builds that camaraderie. Um, it's a really wonderful opportunity to share successes. And this is an area that um, I feel that, that I could have been better at, and this is, this is one of my goals moving forward with my board is to thank them more and show more gratitude towards my board member and, and talk about the really positive things. Um, in the past, particularly this last year, we've, we've had a lot of conversations about our, our concerns about the board, but there are some really wonderful things going on and, and so it's important to recount those successes. Specifically this, this past year, I, I was successful in recruiting one new board member, so I now have three board members in San Diego, which is really wonderful. And um, it was a student who also graduated in 2004, but I didn't know her at the time. But she was moving to San Diego, and she emailed me initially to say that she was moving, and did I have any job leads, or could I give her like a, a good idea of like what's going on in San Diego? So we had some initial conversations, and then I didn't hear from her for a while. And I followed up several months later to see how things were going, and since the last time we had talked, she had reconnected with another alumni in the area who I didn't know, and got a job as a speech pathologist through this other organization and was just so grateful that, that the alumni network was there. Um, it actually was a little bit decentralized. She didn't get there through me, but that's okay. There, it's, I think it's really wonderful that alumni are, are taking initiative on their own to help alumni and then also seek out alumni. So this, this woman, Tiffany, told me at a, a different event that she really wanted to give back to Trinity and she wanted to know how she could do so. So I took that opportunity to share with her that <laughs> I would love to have additional help on the board. And um, I just, that was a really nice situation that came to me. So maybe I took a little too much credit in saying I recruited, the situation just lined up a nice, uh, nicely and just really lifted my spirits that people do want to participate, especially at the board level. So sharing stories like that, um, I think can rejuvenate a group of people. Um, and you know, you'll all have your own stories from your, your different organizations that you work with. But, um, but I think that's just a nice refreshing thing to do that kind of gets away from the tedious tasks so keep that in mind. Um, so next I'd like to talk about board member responsibilities. Um, like I said, it's not just about attending meetings, although that's highly important. And it's, it's good to read agendas ahead of time and show up on time and um, speak up if the conversation drags. Um, just to, to have a, a more effective and fruitful conversation. And again, not all of the work takes place at the meeting, so it's really important to stick to the assignments that you have from the meeting and the outcomes. And, um, and also participating at the event level and in more of the programmatic activities is also a really important aspect of being a board member. We talked about this a little bit, um, just being respectful of uh, time of staff, um, although they're really great here and have been wonderful in my own experience when I've reached out and said that I needed something. I've gotten really wonderful response, so I'm very grateful to all of you here for how you've helped me. So there are two different aspects of board development. I think that people can develop themselves as individuals, but then there is also a way that um, we can thrive uh, together. So having, um, we've, we've talked a little bit about um, uh, recruitment procedures, and it's good to have those established so that you know what to look at. And you're not just recruiting one time a year. This is something that you kind of have in your head always, and you're always looking at the, the relationships that you're establishing 
with the different constituency groups that you're working with um, and keeping in mind who might have interest later. Um, I, I'd also like to point out that it's really important to maintain contact with with all of your board members, especially when you're getting the sense that someone is losing a little bit of interest. Um, just reaching out and finding out why that might be the case could be the, the easy thing that draws someone back in. When you're held accountable for your participation in something, it, it kind of brings you back around. So I just encourage you to maintain those relationships. Um, and then I think another really important element um, that we as individuals can look at as a board members is engaging in self-evaluation. So we're going to talk about that a little bit as well. Does anyone have any questions so far? <laughs> okay. Excellent. Um, questions to ask yourself, and I believe that these are also written on the handouts that everyone has at their table. So these are just things to, to think about in the future. Do you still have the time and energy to serve as a productive member or on the board? What benefits are you receiving from your uh, board engagement as an individual? And be sure to go ahead and express your concerns and frustrations. <coughs> think about your strengths and are those strengths being utilized properly? Um, and then also think about what you like and maybe what you could be better at doing. Then as, as a full board, we can do things such as request presentations by experts, participating in activities, learning the stories, kind of like in this recounting successes, know the stories of your organization so that you feel more passionate about it. The more you know about your organization, the better advocate you're going to be able to be. Um, another opportunity that I've had, actually this uh, most recent spring, was networking with board members of or other organizations. Um, on March 6th, which is Texas Independence Day, I'm sure you all know, all of the Texas universities um, that have alumni chapters in San Diego got together for a Texas Independence Day happy hour. And it was really wonderful. Yeah, it was, it was exciting. There was more than 100 people. I, I don't know what the final count was, but the Texas X's were there, SMU, Rice. There's a huge group from TCU. And then I had 11 people from Trinity show up. So I was really pleased with that. Thanks. Um, but that was just a really great way for me to meet other alumni directors and our um, presidents in San Diego. So again, it was just kind of broaden, broadening my own network. And then also participating in meetings just like this one, regional and national groups, is a way for you to um, feel renewed and refreshed to be able to come back to your organization and make it better. Occasionally, you might run across a situation where you need to ask a board member to step down. Um, and th I think that this is something that, that exists and we shouldn't shy away from the situation and kind of just let it happen on its own. I think a lot of times people will self-identify. If they've missed a few meetings or a few events and they're kind of feeling pressure of time and the other aspects of their lives, they're going to they're going to let you know that, that perhaps it's time for them to take a, a less, um, a role with less responsibility. But if that, that person is not self-identified, it's important for leadership to, to recognize that and address the situation. And so in private, ask the person why their involvement has shifted and be an attentive listen, listener. Go ahead and thank the person for their service because gratitude for no matter what you've done is, is really important and makes the alumni feel more valued um, regardless of how the relationship looks in the future. And so then thanking the person for their service and offer them the opportunity to step down. So the key here is it could be a temporary step down until they have their, their priorities have shifted and they can then take on more responsibility with the alumni group but it also might be a, a permanent change. So providing that opportunity to the alumni, I think will preserve that relationship. And um, hopefully that's kind of some guidelines to take the stress out of that potential awkward situation.
there also might come a time when you as an individual um, think that that your commitments are too great and you need to reappropriate your time. Um, so when an organization is no longer one of your top priorities, it's time to think about your commitment. Um, or if things are not materializing as you had expected, it's also time to speak up and let others know um, perhaps what your expectations were and what you would like to see happen. So it's okay to step aside and make room for other people's but it's important to um, be self-aware so that you can help manage a very successful transition to the new leadership. And communicating with Trinity about those sorts of things is, is really valuable. I'm sure the staff here appreciate knowing that sort of thing. We've touched on committees a little bit. I was speaking in the beginning how a recruitment committee is one of the more important um, committees that you can have on a board. And the other committees that you might develop are really going to depend on what your priorities and needs are for your group. But it's just like it's important to have um, clear directives and goals and objectives for an overall uh, board, it's especially important at the committee level to be able to differentiate between why do we have a committee versus the major group. So a lot of the work uh, in an organization takes place at the committee level. So just uh, do a good job of providing job descriptions and clarifying time commitments. Again, just like you would as recruiting a new board member. Um, those, are, those are good things to keep in mind. With our volunteers, um, it's so important to thank them for their service. And thanking them verbally multiple times. And then also thinking of um, the little ways that you can thank people that will make them feel appreciated on a really personal level. Um, so that, that's something that you have, to, you have to know your people and what they like and, um, and just, just be creative in the way that, that you thank your board. But that's such an important aspect of leadership that I'm realizing too and I would like to improve upon is just being more grateful for the support that I do have. The other thing about volunteers too is that these are your future board members. So again, this is part of that listening aspect of developing relationships that um, you're, you're potentially talking to a future board member. So keep that in mind as well. And finally, um, I really liked this quote. Um, it's from Kay Sprinkle, um, who wrote The Ultimate Board Member, which is a great book that I can share with you here in a moment. And it's um, referenced on the handout that you have as well. The ultimate board member is one who draws on their own gifts and talents willingly, who offers his network of contacts appropriately, who thinks beyond boundaries when confronted with a challenge, and thinks procedurally when the organization needs a steady course. So I really feel like those are the, the main uh, points that we need to have in mind when we're um, effective board members. And <laughs> that is what I have. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Since I've been involved in small chapters and big chapters mm -hmm. or small chapters, so if you only have three or so board members. Yeah, to hear you, David. So I'm um, talking a lot the wrong way. If you only have, if you're a small chapter and you only have three or so board members, how do you uh, find enough people to manage the events and get these other volunteers? That's a really good question. When, as you said before, you only have about 200 people or so in the San Diego area. Right. As opposed to thousands here in San Diego. So one, one thing that we do in San Diego, I um, so I've been doing this for about four years now, so I know I'm going to get between, let's just say, 10 and 15 people at a given event. Um, so that's, that's a nice intimate, that's, uh, 10 to 15 people is a nice intimate uh, um, group size, and I, I know I can generally expect about that many people. But the number of events, and, and so I feel like I can, I can manage that well, but the number of events is where I have more uh, a difficult time uh, because I don't have the additional help. So in San Diego, we've, we're currently cutting back on the number of events that we have every year. So that's one way that we're managing it. And for our board, we each, um, each member takes an individual event. And we most certainly support one another with, you know, day of activities and offering help, you know, towards the end. But somebody always takes the lead on having events. 
So I'm fortunate and I have people who are pretty well organized and enjoy this sort of thing, so it, it works well for us. But it is something that I, I know I personally, um, I'm not always a good delegator, so I end up doing a lot of the work myself when it comes to communicating and on Facebook and um, LinkedIn about events and um, you know getting all of the last minute preparations together. It would be nice to have additional volunteers. And so that's one thing that I hope through understanding how to manage volunteers a little bit better and how maybe to start soliciting volunteer help that I will be able to grow our board in that area. But so far we're, we're pulling back and the size of event are the, yeah, I guess kind of the size of event and the number of events that we have in a year. Sarah, I must uh, first of all compliment you because of sharing your knowledge that you learned from this course. Uh, we are all aware of the fact that there are veterans here who are chapter leaders for a long, long time. Your sharing all this information is helping us getting reassured that yes, we are doing it, we are on the right track. There are also a few new tips, twisting a little bit the way we do and think it differently is always helpful. I would really like to highlight one of your tips that you offer in course of your deliberation. I do not know whether all of you could register that and I think you said it very nice and I am highlighting that one that the chapter leaders or the leader of the board needs to communicate with the board members individually time to time to check whether they are on the course. Exactly. It is very important based on my experience dealing with all of you chapter leaders throughout the country, I think there is no compromise to this fact that it is important that chapter leaders need to be aware of the fact, hey, all my team members, are they with me? You need to check that time to time. And I'm not telling that you need to, but this is a fact. As a leader, this is again sharing tips. I'm kind of helping you to share this valuable tip. If I, if you, as a chapter leader, I am marking my calendar way beginning the year, that three times I'm throwing an offer three times a year. I will take my board members out to drink or lunch. I may divide my board members into two or three people, not the entire board members, but I can talk to them. And just to make sure they are still motivated. Remember, you hit the motivation first. You did not say the mission statement. You made it very clear why I am motivated, why I am doing this why I am volunteering. It needs to be visited, revisited time to time because we are not, this is not my pay job. This is a time that I'm contributing. If we do it deliberately, chapter leaders take, say, chapter leaders are smart enough to understand someone is drifting away. I would spot those people and I say, hey, can we have lunch together? <coughs> and I'm sitting down and I'm telling my success stories how wonderfully I'm enjoying all of this time, how wonderfully I'm feeling connected, more connected, to see, to test the person, whether that person is getting more excited. If I see the person is not with me, I would put more dose in it. And just to make sure the person is still with us on the same team, or this, on the same bus. If I see that is not the case, I know as a leader, I'm not doing the right thing. So I need to reevaluate myself, what I am not doing right, why I am losing my board members. Remember as your chapter leaders, some other chapter leaders are here, they always share the story. I started big, but I'm losing. I'm now down to three or four or five. Why it is happening? That's where your tip I'm trying to highlight, motivation, Visiting with them individually to check on their status is very important. Excellent. So the, the handout that I provided was along that vein, that these are questions to stimulate conversation. They're things for you to know about yourself, but then also when you're kind of having these annual meetings with your board, that you can, you can provoke them with these questions as well to kind of get to the bottom of 
what are the good and the bad of, of being on the board. Anyone else? I think this is from the presentation. I think this is exactly what I'm going to do with another um, uh, nonprofit that I'm looking to rebuild in uh, Dallas. And so I think this has got a lot of great information. And like how um, some men was saying, it's it's really knowing to check into your um, the guy the people on your board to know that they're hopefully getting what they had wanted and which led them to wanting to serve on the board. And so I think that's a great pointer that um, I think we as our nonprofit need to do better. So I'm so glad that you had brought that up to our attention. Excellent. I would like to direct your attention to this book. Um, it's referenced in your handout. It's the Ultimate Board Member's Book. It's a one-hour guide to understanding and fulfilling your roles and responsibilities as a board member. It was really practical and very easy to read. I really encourage you, particularly if you're on another board as well, take a look at it because it has from both the leadership perspective and then just as as a board member. So um, that's a lot of what my class was based on and this presentation was based on. So and I, I just I really found it valuable. Cool. Thank you, Sarah.